Okay, so allegedly, we have here a rod suspended from something that can actually move. And I'm going to thump it at different places along, and we need to watch which way does the top move in response. So what should happen if I hit the rod in its center of mass? So what should you be seeing up here if I hit the rod this way at the center of mass? Should go that way, right? The whole thing should translate. Let's see if we can get this to work. Did it? We'll say yes. What if I hit it at the top? Goes the way I hit it. What if I hit it at the bottom? All the way at the bottom. All right, let's see. I'm not watching because I'm hitting. So what did you see? Remember, believing is seeing. <laughs> Watch it again. It went back, right? It went this way. Okay, that was the way it went initially. So somewhere in the middle, there's got to be a point where it doesn't move either direction. Since I hit it high enough, it goes that way. I hit it low enough, it recoils this way. Somewhere in the middle, it should stay at rest. So let me try where there's this suspicious red line. <laughs> Unpersuaded, try it again. <laughs> Remember, Ian. Believing is seeing. <laughs> One more time, Ian. You will see it at rest. Did you see it, Ian? A little bit. Okay, I'll take that as a moral victory. <clears throat> you will see what I tell you you will see. No, wrong, that one. Okay, so <clears throat> we'd like to understand how to calculate where we would hit the rod, which we'll think of as a baseball bat, only a very poorly manufactured one, so it's uniform. And we will hit it at some distance y below the top. And what we would like is to figure out how far down do we need to hit it so that the top doesn't want to move left or right. That spot is called the sweet spot. And if you're playing baseball and you hit the ball on, with the bat at the sweet spot of the bat, then the end that's in your hands doesn't need to recoil one way or the other, and so you don't get your palm stung. But if you hit it away from the sweet spot, then your hands will have to exert a big force on the end of the bat, or you're going to drop the bat. Which in baseball is Which, perfectly okay. <laughs> I make no justification for baseball, okay? I have no rationale for it. So, so the question is, how would we, well, what do we want, what does that mean that the top is not moving instantaneously? What, how are we going to describe that? That seems to me like a geometric condition. In fact, isn't this a lot like something we already worked on? Rolling without slipping? How come? Because the top part has an angular velocity such that it counteracts the linear velocity. Oh, okay. So his argument is you're thinking with respect to the center of mass? Something like that. 
So, okay, if we thump it at the center of mass, the center of mass moves to the right. How much is it going to want to rotate? None, because you thumped it at the center of mass, so you thumped it and produced no torque about the center of mass, so no angular momentum about the center of mass, so therefore it's just the center of mass translation. That would not be consistent with the top being fixed. That would be consistent with the top moving to the right at the center of mass velocity. So hitting it in the middle is not a winner. It's going to have to be below the midpoint. But if it's in rigid rotation about that endpoint, that's what we want, right? Then this point would stay at rest. The center of mass would move at its speed, and the bottom would have to move twice as fast as the center of mass in order for everything to work out so that it rotates as a rigid body around a fixed, hello, a fixed point at the end. Is that right? Because if you think about the rotation If that end were fixed, then the farther you are away, the faster you need to be going, right? And in fact, if we call this distance y, then the speed at y right after being thumped should have what dependence on omega? Omega times y. So we're going to thump it at some place down here, and that will change its momentum. Suppose that the change in momentum is delta p, and we might call this direction the x direction. So it's delta p in the x direction. How fast is the center of mass going to move? If we've thumped it, and so we've transferred an, a, mom, a momentum delta p to the rod. So uh, delta p transferred from, what is it that's coming in from? the bullet, the bat, the ball, from the ball to the bat, okay? So if the, if the bat now has momentum delta p, then VCM must be delta p divided by m, right? Okay, if the top is going to be fixed, then we need this to be true, right? If so, if the top is momentarily at you know fixed or at rest. then VCM must be equal to omega times what? D over 2. OK, so far, have I worried about angular momentum? No. So now we have to worry about angular momentum which means we get to pick a reference point. Uh-oh. One more attempt at picking a reference point. Any ideas? 
where the ball hits. Why is that convenient? Angular momentum is zero again. So let's pick point where ball hits bat. as reference. Okay. Then L naught is zero. Therefore, L final is zero. So we just have to express L final. L final has an orbital part r cross p plus i prime omega. <coughs> See if you can write it down, the two terms, using y as the distance below the top where we thump the rod. <coughs> You're going to need y minus something, I suspect. Okay. So the distance between, okay, we're using this point, but the center of mass is up there. So the center of mass is translating to the right, and we already figured out VCM, so this is D over 2 times, what's this? Delta P. Okay, which would be mv center of mass. And what direction is that? So this is our reference, and that's the momentum r cross p. Is that not into the board? Which way is it? So this is, is this the reference we're using? Yeah, this is where he said to use, right? So R cross P, oh, yeah, okay, R cross P, that's in. Okay, what's the moment of inertia of the rod? About its center of mass? One twelve. And which way is that? That's going to be out. Which is convenient since we have to add these things up and get zero. Okay, so that says y minus d over 2 times m times v center of mass is equal to 1 12th m d squared omega, except that omega is 2 v center of mass over d. So y minus d over 2 m v center of mass is equal to 1 sixth m v center of mass times d. So wipe these things out and throw d over 2 to the other side, and we get y is equal to d times 1 half plus 1 sixth, which is 2 thirds. So if we hit the rod 2 thirds of the way down, the top will stay at rest at least momentarily. Eventually, of course, it has to slide off. But momentarily, during the collision, there's no impulse at the top. <laughs>